guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Casey if you are new here and if you are new I would love for you to subscribe and or hit the little bell so you'll get notified every time I post a new video so today I am really excited because I'm going to start a new series on my channel it's going to be called curls with Casey and I'm going to be doing little episodes basically with everything you need to know about going natural I've been natural now for about four and a half years so I know a thing or two about the whole process of going natural and maintaining natural hair and all of that great stuff. And now that I'm at this point in my journey, I feel like I'm really confident in giving you guys the best advice possible about every little thing. So today we're going to start off with the very first thing that ever starts when you first go natural, which is the big chop. So before I get into this video, I do want to say that I do already have a video all about the transitioning stage. I'm going to put it in the cards above and also in the description box below. If you're still in transitioning stage, I would suggest going to watch that video and then coming back to watch this video. So like I said, I have been natural for about four and a half years now. And if you're new to my channel, I just want to give you kind of like a rundown on my hair journey. So in July of 2012, I got seriously frustrated with my hair and I decided that I wanted to go natural. So I stopped getting perms and um, I transitioned for about seven months and I decided to big chop for the first time on February 10th of 2013. Then I grew my hair out for about two years and I got bored with it and I decided I wanted to dye it. So I bleached it this really like kind of gingery color. I'll put pictures on the screen. And I did that for my high school graduation, which was in May of 2015. A few months later, in August of 2015, my hair like had completely changed. It was not healthy anymore. The color had completely damaged my curls and I was very upset with it. And I just didn't like the way it was. So I decided to cut it again. Um, this would be Big Shop number two. And I got a tapered cut to start getting rid of some of the colored hair. I did still have some dye in my hair, but for the most part, it was all the color was gone. And at that point, I was ready to start transitioning again to having healthy hair like the way it was prior to when I dyed it. So then after I got the taper cut, I grew it out my whole freshman year of college all the way through until like the first semester of my sophomore year of college. And so that was around September of 2016. And at that point, my taper cut was like it didn't have any type of shape or anything, so I was ready to get it cut even. So I big chops again to be big chop number three, and um, that was my most recent chop, and I just got all the color cut off, I got all of my damaged ends cut off, and I was just ready to start fresh. So that, like I said, was in September or October-ish, I can't remember the exact date, but September or October-ish of 2016, and this is where I am. So I've gone through a lot of different things with my hair journey. I've gone through heat damage, I've gone through color damage, I've gone through a lot of different things, and cutting my hair was just always my solution and it always helped me to like motivate myself to just start over and do it right the next time. Everybody's hair is different and so you shouldn't be afraid to cut your hair. You shouldn't be afraid to ever start over. I feel like chopping is just always a new beginning and you're gonna learn new things every time. So if you don't know exactly what the big chop is, um, it doesn't only have to be, you know, cutting your hair to get rid of perm ends. It can also be classified as when you just cut your hair to get rid of damaged ends. And I mentioned this in my transitioning video, but you don't have to big chop. You can always transition for a longer period of time, grow your natural hair out until it's to the length that you want, and then cut off the damaged ends once you feel like your natural hair is at a comfortable length for you. I personally was just too anxious to see my curl pattern. I was too anxious to get rid of, get rid of damage. I was just, I, I just cut it, you know. I. The Big Chop was just like a really rejuvenating experience for me and every time I did it, I felt better every time. I don't plan on Big Chopping ever again at this point because I feel like I'm now really confident in my hair and I'm confident in knowing what my hair likes and what it doesn't like. But before when I was still experimenting, you know, the Big Chop was just a way for me to start over and motivate myself to do better. So for my new Big Choppers or for anybody who is just now starting in their natural hair journey, I have a few tips for like the beginning stages of what you need to do when you first decide that you want to big chop or right after you've already big chopped. So at this point, if you didn't already switch all of your products to all natural products during your transition stage, once you big chop, you really need to invest in natural hair products. So that means no sulfates, no parabens, no crazy chemicals. Um, make sure you avoid products that have a heavy amount of alcohol. I'm going to do a separate video on products that I think are great for new naturals, but <coughs> excuse me. 
But some good brands to start thinking about or looking um, into are Cantu, um, Shea Moisture, of course, Camille Rose Naturals, LK Naturals, PGIN, um, Made Beautiful, Main Choice. There are so many natural hair products to choose from now in this point at this point of life. Because when I first started going natural, it was literally like Shea Moisture, Carol's Daughter, Cantu. That was it. Now there's like so many things to choose from. You just have to um, research. You have to try different things, see what works for you, see what doesn't. Like I said, I am going to do a full video on products that I think are great for new naturals, but just look out for some of these natural hair brands. They all have a great selection of products. Their prices do vary, so it depends on what your budget is. But those brands are a good place to start testing the waters. You also really want to start reading labels and understanding natural hair ingredients as this um curls with Casey series goes on I will be going very in detail about natural hair ingredients and um, things that go into natural hair products but just start reading labels start understanding what um, ingredients work for what purposes it's gonna help you narrow down what products will work for you and it's gonna also help you understand what products work for what type of hairstyle you're going for Another really important thing is you're going to experience this thing called scab hair. I mentioned this in my transitioning video as well. Scab hair is just basically this really terrible thing that happens when you first go natural. Your scalp is basically still very damaged from the perm, so the hair that first grows when you first start going natural is not completely healthy. It's not your real texture yet. Like I said, your scalp is still trying to recover just as much as your hair is because believe it or not, perms do damage the scalp as well. So that hair that first grows is a lot drier, it's a lot coarser, it may not curl as well as it will once it starts to grow healthier. And everybody's scab hair period is different. Some people only experience it in the beginning of their transition stage and that's it. Some people experience it for years before you know their hair decides to grow in a completely healthy state. Everybody is different, but you just really don't want to give up when you experience this because as your hair begins to grow and it begins to get healthier, it will retain moisture better, it will start to curl better. You will see a difference in your hair after the first year or two because like I said, that hair that first grows is not as healthy as it will be once your scalp is completely recovered. A lot of people always ask me also um, how often you should trim when you first go natural, but only trim as much as needed. Honestly, you're gonna know when your hair needs to be trimmed when the ends are a lot drier and they're not retaining moisture as well, or if they just look very brittle compared to the hair that is growing in, or if when you do like a twist out or a braid out, the ends are straighter or just not curling as much. And don't cut your hair yourself in the beginning, especially if you have a TWA, a teeny weeny afro. You can't see in certain areas and you're not gonna cut your hair in a good shape. I just, unless you went to cosmetology school, don't do it yourself. Go to a professional, go to, try a natural hair salon if you can. If not, you can go to hair cuttery. They'll cut your hair more professional than you will. But a lot of the hair that you're gonna be trimming in the beginning is going to be scab hair, so it is good to trim. But like I said, only do it as often as needed. You're gonna have to kind of be the ultimate judge of that. Once your hair begins to grow a lot more healthier and you, you understand your hair a lot more, you won't feel the need to trim as often. This next tip is pretty obvious, but you don't want to expect your hair to grow at the same rate as anyone else. Everyone's hair journey is different. You have to be patient with yourself and your hair. Also, you want to expect that your hair may go through some changes. You may have very different curl patterns all across your head. That's normal. It may change, it may not. Don't look at YouTubers like myself and expect you know your hair to look exactly like mine or like anyone else's. Everybody is different. Even if we have the same hair type, which I don't really go by that often, like 4A, 4B, 4C, whatever. It doesn't mean that our density is the same. It doesn't mean that our porosity is the same. It doesn't mean that our hair is as thick or as fine. You know, hair type doesn't define anything. Everybody's hair has different characteristics and everybody's um, hair routine is going to be different because you're not gonna be able to use the exact same products as someone else and get the same exact result. This next tip is really, really important. Like really, 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 really important. When you first go natural, don't put heat or color on your hair. Please just try to go as long as possible in the beginning stages without using heat or color. You need to let your hair adapt to being in its natural state. If you go ahead and dye it a whole bunch of colors and straighten it a whole bunch of times, you're literally gonna be damaging your new growth right away. You're never gonna see your healthy curl pattern. You're never gonna learn it in its most natural state. You're basically just setting yourself back again to have damaged hair. Over 
overly straightening your hair can almost have the same damaging effect as a perm. So I don't know, do you need to do wear weeds with no leave outs, wear wigs, wear braids, do anything you need to do to avoid heat and color in the beginning stages because I'm telling you it's going to set you back 20 times more if you prolong it and continue to use heat and dye instead of just waiting until your hair is healthy and can um, bounce back from it a lot better. Because once you have nice, strong, healthy, resilient, natural hair, it can almost pretty much handle anything. It can handle dye, it can handle being straightened, not often, not often, but it will be a lot healthier and a lot stronger and you won't have to worry about getting as much damage as you will if you're just damaging your hair straight off in the beginning. It takes time to build hair health. It really does. And last but not least, you just really need to pay attention to your hair and how it reacts to different products and different things. As I mentioned, um, as this series goes on, I plan on getting very, very detailed about what I mean about that. And I plan on giving um, product options for all different types of hair. But just keep this in mind um, for right now. The more you pay attention to your hair and the more you pay attention to what ingredients work for you, the easier it will be to pick products, the easier it will be to figure out a good hair routine for yourself, and the easier it will be really to maintain your hair. Yes, YouTube is here to give you options and to show you different things, but it's really up to you to take different things from different people, different influencers, and different um, you know, natural hair gurus. Come up with the best routine for yourself, for your own lifestyle, for your own hair type. Don't try to copy someone's exact hair routine because nine times out of 10, it's not going to work exactly the same for you. Overall, I just wanted to help people who are just now starting to go natural or who just big chop to understand that you're gonna go through changes with your hair. This is only the beginning, literally only the beginning. And this is really the time to start learning and understanding your hair. And most importantly, you really need to be patient because growth will come with time. You don't wanna focus on growth, you wanna focus on health. And hopefully this hair series will help you um, get to where you need to be uh, when it comes to the health of your hair. So thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to anyone who may have just big chops or you know have just started in their natural hair journey or even transitioning from damaged hair. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and of course subscribe and click that little bell button for notifications. Also, I just posted a video on this entire face makeup situation routine on Friday. So go check out that video if you would like to know how I do my everyday look. And of course, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.